Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. I have a question for you. Do you work with clients that have chronic shoulder tightness and maybe even impingement syndromes as they reach up overhead? How about those clients that struggle with rotator cuff impingement type issues when they start to do activities of everyday life, like reaching behind their car in or to put their clothes on? How about those clients that actually struggle with a lot of the fundamental movement patterns? the pushing and pulling patterns our clients need to do to safely and effectively accomplish their health and fitness goals. Well, one of the reasons I've been sharing so much of this information with you the last two weeks is to help you identify some of the common causes of impingement syndromes, so that impinging of the rotator cuff as clients reach their arms overhead, as well as to solve chronic rotator cuff and or even labral issues. So one of the things that often happens, good morning, Peter, good morning, Jackie. Thanks for being on live with me today, this morning. One of the most common issues that happen with our clients is they start to get tight underneath their shoulders. And I gave you a very simple shoulder assessment, and this is one of the shoulder assessments we do with all our clients, is just standing shoulder flexion. So what we have our clients do is just simply put their arms next to their side and reach straight up overhead, keeping their arm next to their head and keeping their arm straight so we can see their range of motion. As you can see, I'm very limited in my shoulder range of motion because of rotator cuff and labral tears. Hello, Sarah, thanks for watching as well. So one of the things that we wanna do is, after we assess our client, is then our assessments direct our corrective exercise strategy. So the exercises that you wanna do, the corrective exercises you wanna do, the releases and activation patterns are based upon what you found during your assessment. So in a brand new resource I created, Rotator Cuff and Impingement Syndromes, the solution to Rotator Cuff and Impingement Syndromes, I share with you the corrective exercise strategy we use with our own clients and patients in our clinic. Now, I'm not in my clinic right now. I'm in a hotel room in Dallas. I'm about to go to study three days with my business coach. However, I shared with you earlier in this series, in fact, in parts two and three of the series, I shared with you the Integrative Movement System Corrective Exercise Strategies. Those videos are on our website, IIHFE, as well as our YouTube channels and here on Facebook Live. Hey, Nikoya, how are you? Thanks for joining me as well. So the strategy, we always release the areas of restriction and we use our assessments to determine where we want to release with our clients. We don't have our clients dictate to us where we have them release because clients will come in and say, oh, I feel tight between my shoulder blades. And then what we frequently do as practitioners or fitness professionals is like, like, oh, that must be tight. We need to release it and or stretch it. But most of our clients don't need more stretching where they feel tight. That's why you wanna use your assessments to direct exactly where you do your release work. So that's why the shoulder flexion test or assessment is such a powerful assessment. Because if your client can't get their arm straight up overhead or their arm goes out to the side or they're getting impingement syndromes, pinching of their rotator cuff tendon as they go overhead, we don't need to release them more here, and we probably don't need to release them more between their shoulder blades. What limits this motion here? Why do so many of our older clients struggle with overhead motion? It's because they're tight actually right here. There are lats, there are teres major, and the other scapular depressors that pull down hard on the shoulder complex. And this is why the overhead flexion is such a powerful assessment because you'll see that your, most of your clients don't have a problem because their shoulders are so far forward. They have a problem or their shoulders come so far forward because they limit or have limited range of motion, overhead range of motion. And that's why your release work has to be so specific. And that's why I shared with you our go-to release on the Rolga. So thank you guys at Rolga for supplying this excellent tool that we use to do our release work with. And I shared with you how a very simple strategy for releasing the lats and teres major in a previous video. Then once you do your release, you have to teach your client how to activate the most appropriate scapular stabilizers. Specifically, but again, this is not all of them, upper trap, lower trap, and serratus anterior. Those are the muscles that pull the shoulder blades into upward rotation and posterior tilt, but more simply, that's what holds the shoulder blade here versus allowing the shoulder to come down and forward, which is downward rotation and anterior tilt. So don't worry about those words. I explain all of that in solution to rotator cuff symptoms and syndromes. So one of the things that you want to understand is that we want our client's shoulders to wrap around the rib cage. So the shoulders are open and wide and not narrow and either 
forward like this or compress down and back, which is also not narrow and also feeds into the reason why so many of our clients have overhead shoulder range of motion issues. So you assess your client, you use the specific releases based upon your assessment, you use the corrective exercise strategy to help create more optimal and efficient stability of the shoulder complex. I also demonstrated our go-to exercise for that. Actually, we have several. The wall plank is one of them. The rope pull that I demonstrated in the earlier video is another one of the exercises we use to, again, create upward rotation, posterior tilt, and that wide shoulder position. Now, the third component of your corrective exercise strategy is the education. You have to use the right cues because as I demonstrated and discussed earlier, down and back will actually inhibit overhead range of motion. So do that with, with me right now. Reach your arms overhead, nice and freely, or as free as they go for right now for you, and then squeeze down and back, and now reach overhead. And what happens? Very significant restrictions in range of motion. And again, you're almost creating impingement syndrome, so if you feel discomfort here, you're actually putting yourself into that impingement position or impingement of the rotator cuff. So that's again why your cue is such, the cues you use are such a powerful part of your corrective exercise strategy. So again, assess to identify your client's restrictions and why they're creating non-optimal strategies or non-optimal habits. Your corrective exercises help set up the more optimal and efficient posture and movement habits. And then you integrate these exercises, or I should say these habits into the fundamental movement patterns, the pushing and pulling patterns that your clients need to do to safely and effectively accomplish their health and fitness goals. And that's exactly why we created the solutions to rotator cuff and impingement syndromes of the shoulder, because we wanted you to have a complete resource on how to first assess your client, or I should say even back up, to understand how the rotator cuff functions. And we talked about that earlier in this week, that the rotator cuff functions to stabilize the shoulder and then also to create and manage rotation. The goal of the rotator cuff is not to produce large motions of rotation, but to just to stabilize the ball on top of the socket or that humeral head on the glenoid fossa of the scapula. Because once you understand the anatomy and function of the rotator cuff and how it relates to overall shoulder function, then your assessments will help you create, or I should say assess for optimal and efficient habits or what your clients are creating those non-optimal and inefficient posture and movement habits. And that then, as I mentioned, feeds right into your corrective exercise strategy, the releases, the activations, and the cues that you use with your with your clients, and then you integrate these more optimal and efficient habits into the fundamental pushing and pulling patterns, the horizontal pushing and pulling patterns, as well as the overhead pushing and pulling patterns. And then also, the other thing I included in this program are the exercises that you need to modify and either avoid or that you actually need to just throw out of your client's programs. Because a lot of these exercises that our clients love to do, one example is, the behind the back tricep bench dip, that will put the client's shoulder, the individual's shoulder, right into that impingement position of the shoulder and reinforce that forward shoulder position. So bench dips are one of those exercises you completely basically want to throw out of your programs because it will produce shoulder problems. It will overstretch the anterior joint capsule in the front of the shoulder. It will tighten up the back side of the shoulder. It will perpetuate this forward shoulder position. So again, this is why it's so important to understand how the rotator cuff functions as part of the overall shoulder complex, how the shoulder complex relates to the head and neck, and I described that in this program as well, and then how to safely and effectively use your corrective exercises and your functional exercise programs. I put this all together into this brand new resource. You can get more information about this resource either above or below this video, depending on where you're watching it. And you, like I said, you truly will learn about the rotator cuff, what goes wrong with it, what causes rotator cuff and impingement type syndromes, and more importantly, how you can use this strategy, the integrative movement system approach to help your current clients that have shoulder problems. And if you're a health and fitness professional that has chronic shoulder issues yourself, this is the same strategy I use to help my own shoulders. Again, I have bilateral rotator cuff tears, bilateral label tears in both shoulders. And obviously you see my limited range of motion and it, off, it does impact the exercises that I can do, but I've created this strategy, or I should say I created the strategy initially to help my own shoulders so I could continue to exercise and more importantly, do my job as a chiropractic physician. So I know personally that this works and I use it with all my clients. And I actually just got an email yesterday from 
one of the women that have been through our certification program and she just sent me an email and said she just worked with a client that had shoulder surgery, she went to PT, she was still having shoulder problems. In three sessions, Melanie was able to take her client and completely eliminate her shoulder pain, which was impingement type syndromes, or symptoms I should say, and her client called her a miracle worker. And those were her words. The client said, you're a miracle worker. And Melanie was, was very funny. She said, no, I'm not a miracle worker. I just use a system, the integrative movement system that I believe in and works. And I, and I really love that testimonial because it really shows you the power of having a very systematic process. I teach you the exact process in this program from assessment to corrective exercise and how to progress your clients into the fundamental movement patterns. So thank you again for joining me in this series. And if you missed any part of this previous series, you can go back and watch it, like I said, either on our Facebook page, Fitness Education Seminars, or our YouTube channel, Fitness Education Seminars there as well, or our homepage, IIHFE, or right here on Facebook Live. And if you're looking for a complete resource, check out Solution to Rotator Cuff and Impingement Syndromes. The link is either above or below this video, depending on where you're watching it. Thank you again for tuning in live, and I'll be back tomorrow morning answering your questions. If you have questions about the program itself or about your clients that have rotator cuff or impingement type symptoms or anything that I covered in the previous videos. So I got to run off to my workshop today, so make it a great day, and hopefully you've taken a lot of information from this video and from this series because our goal here at the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education is to help you become the resource for your current clients, a reliable and accurate resource for your current clients, and attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. This is Dr. Evan Osar. Make it a great day.